Hey everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how I shoot my talking head videos. So what's a talking head video? Well, basically just what I'm doing right now, talking into the camera. Now why might you want to do this? Well, of course it's not strictly necessary. Um, you already have made your screencast videos at this point. But I do a talking head video at the beginning and end of each of my screencasts for a couple of different reasons, actually. One is, I just feel like it's good for forming a stronger connection with your students if you're seeing them quote-unquote face-to-face. It's also a nice opportunity to review what you've talked about previously and preview what you're going to talk about in the present video. I try to keep mine pretty simple, but you can include anything in these videos. You can talk about world events, you can talk about upcoming class assignments, it's really up to you, so feel free to get creative. You can even go outside if you want. Okay, that being said, let's get to work. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is how to set up your equipment to do a talking head video. And here you see just a picture of my desk, and I tend to record in my office. So the first thing you want to do is choose a location for where you're going to record this video. Now, you're basically just going to be talking into the camera, and if you're like me, your camera is just a smartphone. So you'll need your smartphone here. And you're not seeing my normal um, smartphone holder because I'm using that to hold my smartphone up right now that I'm using to record this video. But I have another one here. This is just another smartphone folder, uh, holder Excuse me, I had lying around. And your smartphone, fits into it just like this. So this is gonna be the camera that you're looking into, okay? And make sure that you have the smartphone with the logo facing you or with the camera lens facing you, this right here. You want that facing you. That's because for many smartphones, this actually is a better camera than the camera on the flip side. It's higher resolution, for some phones at least. So you want your phone facing you like this, okay? Um, now, when you go to shoot your video, if you're like me, you're just gonna be standing right behind the microphone. So I've got my microphone stand set up here, and I've got the condenser mic, my Blue Yeti microphone right here, and I've got my pop filter right in front of it, okay? Um, you might notice some sitting on a ball, I've got back problems, what are you gonna do, right? But um, that's what I sit on. Um, I do have to make sure it doesn't make very much noise though when I record. So I record like this, right? I'm about, you know, eight or so inches from the microphone, the microphone's below me, and I'm looking just straight into the camera of my phone. Now, when you look at your phone, make sure that you're looking at the actual lens of the camera, right? You don't wanna be looking over here because when you shoot your video, it's gonna seem like you're looking off to the side. So you wanna look right at the lens to make it seem like you're looking right at your students. So I'm just talking like this. I talk right into the camera when I'm doing my talking head video. Now, I like to make my talking head videos pretty consistent. So I try to be the same distance away from my phone each time. And I also try to have the frame around me identical. So to accomplish that, I don't move this smartphone, full, uh, smartphone holder. I leave it right here. And you can see here, I've got it under uh, on top of a bunch of um, you know stacks of paper to keep it at the ideal height, right? And usually you want your height of your lens to be right about eye level or maybe a little bit above you. So I leave that in the same position. I don't ever move it. And if I do have to move it, um, I have little marks on my desk, little pieces of tape under this to remind me where it goes. Now, I also try to keep the microphone in the same position because I know I'm going to line up right behind it, okay? And that kind of tells me where to sit, just to sit right behind the microphone. So if I can make it so that the microphone is in the same position every time, that means I'll be in the same position every time relative to the camera. So to accomplish that, you probably can't see this right now, but I have a little piece of tape on the floor that literally says, Mike goes above this, all right? So I make sure just to position the tip of my microphone right above that piece of tape. So 
the microphone is in the same position every time I do a video, and therefore I'm in the same position every time I view a video. So I try to make those as consistent as possible. Okay, now I've got the microphone stand, the mic, the pop filter, the phone. Um, you're also going to need some water, right? You wanna make sure that you're sounding good, and you may have to do a couple of takes to get one that you like. So make sure you drink plenty of water. And you also may want to think a little bit about lighting. Make sure that there's enough light hitting your face and there's not too much of a shadow on your face to look decent. Now, you're not making a fancy movie here. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? If there's a little reflection on the glasses uh, on your glasses, does that mean that your students are going to learn less? No, of course not. So don't worry overly much about this kind of stuff, right? Um, but if you do want to make sure that your video has kind of a professional look to it, um, make sure that you have enough light hitting your face. Now, how do you do that? Well, the easiest way to do that is to choose a location that has plenty of natural light. Now, I'm very lucky. I have a, ho I have a home office and my home office has a, a really big window right here and two smaller windows on the side. It also has three um, wall lights, one, two, three, which you probably can't see in the frame of this video, but they're there. So the natural light plus the wall lights give me plenty of light and plenty of kind of uniform light for this room. But if you don't have that much natural light, you can just use a lamp. Very simple. I'm sure you have one or two lying around your place. And what I like to do, if I have to do this, is I just put one lamp on either side of my camera. One here, one right here, and try to use a nice big shade so the light is diffuse as possible. That will make it a bit less harsh and reduce the, the glare on your glasses if you're wearing any. So lamps are nice to have around to adjust the lighting a little bit. Okay, now what else do I have here? Well, you can see that I have my laptop computer with my script on it, and that's because, of course, you know, I want to review my script for my talking head video before I actually record it. Now, if you're like me, you actually may have a really hard time and feel pretty awkward talking into the camera. Uh, it actually took me a really, really long time and a lot of practice to get this comfortable. And I don't really still feel 100% comfortable talking into my phone in an empty room, right? It still feels kind of weird, but I want to do it because I want my students to learn. Now. Um, that said, so I write my script and I stick pretty close to it when I'm talking into the camera. But if you're someone that is pretty good at just improvising and just speaking naturally into the camera, you may not need a script and that's perfectly fine. So feel free to experiment with a script, without a script, um, whatever you like. If you do not use a script though, try to keep it pretty short, right? I don't recommend making these videos more than a couple of minutes long because you want to get to your screencast, which is where you'll actually be doing probably most of the teaching for your students. Doesn't mean you can't do some teaching during a talking head video, but that's just my style. I tend to do most of my teaching in the screencast. So I have my computer here. Make sure it's out of the frame of the camera. Now, what else? Well, I have a little metronome here. Now, why would I have a metronome? Well, sometimes when you're recording a video with your phone, you get something called audio lag. And that's when the recording of the audio and the recording of the visual shot, the video itself, are not synchronized, right? So I'm, my mouth might be moving, but sound might not be coming out of it. So sometimes the audio and the, the video are a little bit out of sync. Now, that's easily fixed in post-production, which I'll show you how to do later, but in order to make it really easy to fix, you need something that synchronizes a visual signal or something that you see and a sound or something that you hear. And a metronome is perfect for this. So if I turn this on, not sure if you can see that light, but the light and the sound are going off at the same exact time. And that'll make it really, really easy for me to synchronize my video later. So what I do before I actually start talking into the camera is I just do this. 
just hold it up for a couple of beeps. That's quite loud. And uh, that'll make it really easy for me to, to synchronize the audio and the video if they are out of sync, which sometimes can happen depending on your phone and your settings. Okay, so I think um, that's all I wanted to talk about as far as equipment. Um, next, I'll talk about how to set up your shot. Okay, so let's talk about how to set up your shot. First, you want to make sure that your microphone, that the power cord of your microphone is plugged in to your smartphone. I can't tell you how many times I've done a really nice take only to see that the power cord of my microphone was not plugged in. So make sure you do that first. Second, you want to make sure that you're recording your talking head video in the same aspect ratio that you recorded your screencast in. So if you record your screencast in the 16 to nine aspect ratio, you wanna record your video in that same aspect ratio. Now, you also have to frame yourself within the shot, right? So make sure that you are at about the center of the shot or just a little bit off to one side, that's fine as well. And what I've read and seen from folks on YouTube is that they recommend that the top of the frame of the video is about three inches or so above your head. So the top of the frame of my video should be right about here or so. And the bottom of the frame of the video, of the video, excuse me, should be um, right about here, somewhere around halfway down your torso or maybe around your stomach. Something like that is perfectly fine. And that's designed to make sure that you're close enough to the viewer or the viewer can see enough of you to see your facial expressions. And so that's just a little more engaging than if you're too far away, they can't really see your facial expressions that well. Of course, you don't wanna be super close either, that's just kind of awkward. So this ends up being about three to four feet away from the camera, that'll give you that nice moderate distance from the camera so they can actually see your facial expressions but you're not super close to them. Now um, you also want to make sure that your background is not distracting to the viewer. So I don't recommend having your background being a view of outside or of anything that's going to move or have any movement in the background. So I have a nice boring wall back there, it has a light blue color, that's perfectly fine for me. I've also seen some things or read some things that recommend that you wear um, a solid color and there are other clothing recommendations as well. I tend to not really worry about clothing too much except I try to make sure that the clothes I'm wearing or the shirt I'm wearing doesn't match the background. That can be a bit awkward. But other than that, I just suggest that you wear whatever makes you comfortable and confident or just wear whatever you normally wear to teach. It's much more important for you to be comfortable and confident and just be used to speaking into the camera than to worry about anything else. Remember, you're not making a polished movie here. You're just trying to shoot some video and talk to your students. It's really not any uh, of a bigger deal than that. Okay, so I think that's good enough for setting up the video. Next, I'll show you how to rehearse and record your talking head video. Now, if you've never done this before, if you've never spoken into the camera of your phone, then you might wanna practice doing just that first before you actually try to record what you wanna to say to your students. And how I do this is I just talk into the camera and I say whatever pops into my head, doesn't matter what it is, it could be you know, what I had for breakfast or what I'm thinking about or you know, the weather, it doesn't matter. But I just talk into the camera until I become comfortable talking into the camera. And so I suggest you do that too if you find yourself just feeling a bit anxious about talking into the camera in an empty room by yourself because it is a bit weird, let's all admit. Now, once you're comfortable enough talking into the camera, then start to think about what you wanna say. Now, if you've written a script, then you already know what you're gonna say. But if you just wanna do this without a script, which many people do, and I'm actually secretly very jealous of those people, um, then just go for it and do a couple of takes and see how they sound. Uh, but if you are using a script, and I'll just show you how I do this, I recommend, um, and I'm looking at my script, it's on my computer to my right here. So 
um, if you're using a script, I just read through the script a couple of times. Just in my head, I just read it to myself silently, just to kind of load it into my memory so that my brain is kind of used to the words. So I'll just do that now. And this is just going to be the introduction talking head to my double fertilization video. That's all I'm doing here. So it's, it's pretty short. Then after I've done that, I actually say it a couple of times just to get used to saying the words out loud. Okay. And it also helps to kind of load the words in my memory for when I try to memorize those words and say them into the camera. So I'll do that right now. Also very important to take plenty of drinks of water. So you sound good. Okay, and remember, I'm not even recording right now. I'm just saying what's in my script, just getting used to saying it. Hey everyone. In the last video, we discussed the development of pollen and ovules and the cells present within these structures. In this video, we'll examine how these structures carry out double fertilization. At the end of this video, you should be able to answer two questions. Okay, now you probably know this that uh, that recitation of my script was pretty flat, right? Pretty kind of lifeless, um, not very animated. So when you record for real, try to be a little bit more animated, um, smile into the camera if you remember and if you feel like it. Um, I always forget to do that, but um, you know, just try to give yourself a little personality, uh, be yourself, and um, you know, just try to be a little bit engaging and animated for your students because they'll pay more attention if you are. Now, after you've read through the script a couple of times, um, I recommend reading through it just to yourself again, and then speaking into the camera, right? You're memorizing the script, which is why I don't make them super long because it's hard to memorize lots and lots of sentences, right? We're not professional actors here, we're teachers. Um, but just read the script again, and then say it into the camera from, excuse me, from memory. So I'm going to do that now. Make sure you take another drink of water before you do. Okay, and before you start speaking, I recommend just staring into the camera for like three seconds because that'll make it easier to edit in post-production if you want to do a fade in or fade out or something like that. Hey everyone. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Um, I like to use my metronome here to make sure that, the, that I can sync up the video and audio later on. So I'm going to just start that. Let's make sure that actually plays. Or you can even just press it, that's fine. That's good enough. And I do several takes, maybe three or four takes, and I just keep the, the phone, my camera, rolling throughout all of those takes. I don't stop at the end of each one because you can always just edit them later, you can cut them out, or you can cut out all the video except for what you wanna use. So just keep it rolling. Although I will, I will mention that um, this, uh, uh, this microphone, when plugged into your phone, does take quite a bit of power. So it may drain your phone pretty quickly. So make sure your phone is uh, pretty well charged before you do this. Okay, so enough tangents. Let me actually record this video. And at this point, I would press the record button on my phone. I'm gonna take one last look at my script. Hey everyone. In the last video, we examined the structure of the pollen grain and the structure of the ovule. Now in this video, 
We'll take a look at how these structures participate in double fertilization. And in this video, we'll have two questions. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Now you probably noticed that I didn't recite my script perfectly word for word and that's fine, that's no problem. As long as you're getting the ideas that you need to across to your students, I think that's perfectly fine. So once you've recorded a few takes of your video, um, check them out on your phone, view them, and if you think they're good enough, upload them to your computer. And remember, don't go for perfection here. You do not want to spend hours and hours and hours recording your talking head videos, right? Resist the temptation to go for perfection because if you're like me and a teacher, you don't have that kind of time, right? So just get something that's good enough so that your students can see your face and so that you can tell them what they're about to see. It really doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. Okay, so um, next you'll actually see me do an outro talking head to this video. Okay, so I hope you found my suggestions on how to record a talking head video useful. Remember, don't go for perfection here. Just try to connect with your students and tell them what they're about to see. Now, in the next video, I'll go over how I create what I call a learning guide, or you could also call this a study guide. This is essentially a version of your visual layout that has a lot of things removed from it. So you're essentially requiring the students to draw what's in your video. I also usually add a bunch of questions to this. And these learning guides, I think, are arguably even more important than the videos themselves because they form the basis for what the students will actually do. And as you're probably tired of hearing me say by now, doing is learning. It's also the first opportunity for students to determine how well they understood what's in the video. And by looking at these, you can choose to focus on certain things and spend more time on them depending on what the students had the most trouble with. So I'll talk about that more in the next video and I will see you then.